everyone. My name is Josh Stoltz. I'm the executive director of Grow Benzi. And for the next 15 minutes, I'm going to tell you about our community center and what we've been up to for the last uh, almost 12 years. I'm going to leave some time at the end of, the, uh, of our session for some questions and answers. And then, like I said, if you want to follow up with me um, out in the hallway or for dinner, um, I'm open. Um, Grow Benzi started uh, 12 years ago. We're a nonprofit 501c3. A group of folks got together and said, let's, let's start a community garden space. And they found this four acre commercial plant nursery that they purchased. They said, let's just buy this space and we'll figure it out later. If you're looking to buy a place, I recommend to push in the brakes a little bit. There's a lot more to things than just buying a space. Uh, that's one lesson I want to pass along to you. When you're really excited about a thing, hold on. I'll tell you 12 years of experience on building community centers and figuring out how to make money for a community center uh, with at least one employee over the next 10 minutes. And so we bought this community center and uh, over the next six years, it was a matter of getting the name out there. We've, we uh, received grants to pay for the roof and get everything up to code. Uh, we never had a full-time director. It was always a volunteer board uh, that had different passion projects. So one grant would be specific for our incubator kitchen. One grant would work with our, uh, the farm portion. We had the hoop houses, uh, 15,000 square feet of hoop houses that we converted to grow in the ground um, rather than heat the, heat the greenhouses. And so these spaces developed over time, but we never had anybody answering the phones all the time. And so that's where I would say, hold on before you get excited about your, your space, because to, to hire someone costs money. And to pay for your mortgage costs money, and to pay for the electric bill costs money. So a lot of ideas, a lot of folks come to me and say, I want to start a community center. And I say, where is the nearest community center right now? There's a lot of community centers out there. But that's just the, that's the heart of us. That's the Go Benzie started with this space and uh, with a USDA grant to promote our farmer's market uh, and our incubator kitchen, they afforded uh, enough money to bring me on board as their first full-time director. That was five years ago this coming October. And we were off to the races. Let's figure out how we can afford to keep me on staff and keep the lights on. And so we had a strategic plan. We had three things in mind. Number one, make money. Number two, um, get people using the space. And then number three, offer programs to the community that uh, the community needs, but is not duplicating existing programs. And so we just started getting folks in there. And uh, it was just a matter of seeing who's out there that could come in. Uh, we have a B Guild, Benzie B Guild, started with five people. We now have 90 people on that email list. We keep bees on the property. We have about 10 or 15 folks that come in weekly to take care of the bees. Uh, just two weeks ago, we had our big spinning party where we have 20 or 30 people come in, help spin the honey, and that's used as a fundraiser. Um, so now they have, they've built up their own kind of organization to pay rent to use the space. Downstairs, we have a sewing studio. We have a program called Days for Girls. They uh, create f uh, reusable feminine hygiene kits. They now have made over 2,000 of these kits sent to 10 different countries. They have 60 different volunteers. And through that specific program, they now pay us rent to use the space. Again, unless you have a Days for Girls program in your community, don't buy a building worth a million bucks. Wait and find other spaces that can be used. Um, our farm, we were initially paying someone. We were paying a farmer to farm in our hoop houses. Um, we, three years ago, we turned that model to become an incubator approach where now we have MSU students from their orga organic farm training program come in and lease the space. And so now there's no risk to us. We offer them the space. They can start their own farm rather than buying their own property and building their own infrastructure. They can utilize our space, uh, get introduced to the network, um, sell at our farmer's market, get to know some of the restaurant owners in the community before they commit uh, big money into their own business. Uh, with the incub incubator kitchen I, I mentioned, we've had to really work on that. So if anybody wants an incubator kitchen, I'd also say at least push in the clutch for a second. Because there's a lot of, uh, 
there's a lot of enthusiasm behind incubator kitchens, but you really have to wonder how many folks, and this is my experience in the last five years, how many, have, how many folks have the ability to start their own business and take it to the next level where they can consistently pay you or that hourly uh, rate to use the kitchen. Enough to pay someone to make sure they put the spoons away and clean up after themselves. So realize if you have a building, you have to maintain the building. So we've learned that over the last few years. So now we really stress three parts to this. We have an incubator kitchen, so we have maybe four or five businesses that use that to start their own value-added foods. We use it as a commissary, which would be food trucks or caterers, and then we use it as a teaching kitchen. So through the summer months, we have a farmer's market, and uh, we have two shows, every farmer's market, working with MSU Extension and Munson Healthcare, where there's a food prescription uh, presentation. So if you were referred by our local pantry, our local senior resource center, the local clinic, and local hospital, you can come in, sit through one of these 20 minute to 30 minute presentations, and when you're done knowing how to use kohlrabi, you get uh, 20 or $25 worth of tokens and get to shop at the farmer's market to buy some kohlrabi and take home to your family. So that's how our kitchen is used. We don't make money in education, and we squeak by with about $15 an hour to use the kitchen. So that's, that's if you went up and just looked at Grow Benzie, that's what we've been up to in terms of community center as a space, using it uh, for youth programs, after school programs. We have mom groups that come in. We work with Great Start Collaborative. This is a group zero to six years old. They come in and uh, the kids play while the parents get to hang out with one another. Um, just as many organizations from the community that we can get into that space. That's our community center, okay? Uh, we have, that's earned income. We have grants that also pay for some of our operations, but we're really relying uh, more on the earned income and contributions and memberships. So to get away from grants where we go after the next project, we're trying to stay away from that. So that third system, or that third approach I told you from the system or from the strategic plan has us working in systems now. And so rather than starting a new pantry in the food system or starting an entire youth program in the education system, I've found myself in the last two and three years uh, on these leadership teams of networks in the community or board of directors where we've identified the need for coordination within systems. Quick example, and I, we can do this with food, we can do this with healthcare, with volunteering. We have what's called a local college access network. We'll be hiring a coordinator at the end of the year. This, think of the education system where we all say, you know what, I wish kids would pursue post-secondary education. They don't have to go to college, but they at least need some sort of education. It could be a two-year degree, it could be a certificate. Everyone says, we agree. But we've got different schools with different teachers and with different administrations and different dollars coming in. We have different after-school programs and youth programs and preschool, all in the same community. This is just in Benzie County. When we start talking a five-county radius or a 10-county radius, it gets so, so gray on the outside that we said, let's just stick with Benzie County. So we have a leadership team. The leadership team consists of three colleges. We have both community, or school foundations at the table. We have both superintendents at the table. We have our Chamber of Commerce at the table. We have the Regional Foundation at the table. And we have uh, the, uh, the county administrator, Mitch Dice from Benzie County, at the table. So we have these decision makers at the table saying, we can do this. We are all agreement on pursuing post-secondary education for our 12th graders. Now we'll be hiring a coordinator at the end of the year who will work with both schools and start action teams to start working after these goals. So this is a systems approach. Rather than grow Benzie, go out to the community and come to you and say, we do youth programming. We do after school programming and field trips at, our, at Grow Benzie. We will now come to you and say, we have a coordinator that is working with both schools from preschool to post college to beyond high school, pursuing uh, a unified goal. And we have all these people at the table. So that's a systems approach that we're working on. We're looking to do the same thing in the food, uh, the food world and the same thing with healthcare. So we get so spread out within our own silos and programs and, and band-aids to specific issues. What we're doing now is taking a systems approach and bringing in these networks 
um, to identify which, which uh, coordination pieces are going to be strongest and where there's already existing uh, coordination. So I've been lucky enough to, to be selected as a change maker fellow. The Rotary Charities allowed me to go to the United Kingdom for the Forum for the Future in January. So as part of this international school, there was 23 of us selected. Benzie County was one of the two from the United States that got to go. <laughs> my, mom, my mom was tickled. Mom was very tickled. But uh, beyond, beyond the, the, you know, the, the excitement of going to the United Kingdom, I also got to go to Russia for some of the field work. So they picked us out to use this, these systems tools recognizing the big work that goes into these systems approaches and then learning the tools and then applying them in a field work situation. So I got to go to Russia for a couple weeks to, to do that. And then I was also selected recently for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. I'll be going to Africa on November 4th to look at their food system. And that is an exchange program. So um, there was a gal, gal that came up a couple years ago from Mozambique. Uh, she owns her own food companies down there, and so what I'll be going down to do is take a look at their food chain to see where the value is added. I'll also be interviewing university students and elementary students to see what their attitude is about agriculture and compare that with the folks around here. So, Grow Benzie, we have our community center. We figured that out, or we're still figuring that out, but we're a place. And I do want to mention we have our seed library in here. We have a seed library. So of all these cool things that we do, we have a card catalog. You guys remember card catalogs. We had a millennial not know what a card catalog was. She looked at it, she goes, what is this? We have a card catalog full of seeds. And we meet a couple times a year to do seed saving projects and, and workshops. Uh, but we have a seed library. We also have a compost guild. So we have folks that drop off compost. Every spring they get to take home their own uh, bucket of nutrient rich soil. And we also have a community garden. We also have a fermentation guild that meets once a month. So a group of pr probably 10 or 20 folks get together and, and talk about fermenting and, and uh, exchange recipes. And one day they'll make f uh, kombucha and one make they'll make, they, they'll make sourdough bread. So that's what Girl Benzie is in the space. Those are the programs that we've kind of helped incubate into the space. And there's also the, you can see where we're drawing the line of not starting new things, just promoting things to, to have run themselves. So that fermentation guild, there's, it's just volunteer, they use the space. The seed library, uh, we have volunteers who take care of that. But we haven't gone and put our, put our flag in the sand to say we should start this new thing. We've been holding back to say what systems approach can we take in terms of coordination on a bigger scale that can plug into, say, a 10-county network, and how would that help on a county level if we can have a coordinator at that, that level. So. Growbenzie.org, we are on social media, we have a lot of videos, and I'll be uh, video uh, vlogging my trip to, uh, to uh, Africa, too, if you want to stay tuned for that. Thank you very much. Have a great day.